Hey, hey, you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Chelsea, and in today's video, I'm very excited because I have been wanting to make a video like this for a couple months now, and I think it'll be really helpful to those of you who are wanting to get pregnant, especially via IVF or other fertility treatments. I'm mainly gonna be focusing on IVF and frozen embryo transfers because that's what I'm doing this year. Anyway, I wanted to give you first a little bit of context. If you're new here, if you don't know my story, I did IVF back in 2018, and that's kind of how I started my YouTube channel, by documenting that. So I will put it up here or somewhere. You can go over and watch my whole IVF journey. And we did a round of IVF in February of 2018. And from that, we were able to get eight embryos. And from those eight, we did the PGS genetic testing, and three of those were normal. So about six months after that, we transferred one embryo and that ended up being our daughter who was born in May of 2019. So she's coming up on two years, which is crazy, you guys. Okay, so the first thing I wanna tackle in this video is in regards to a question I get asked a lot about on Instagram, usually through my DMs. People ask me all the time about what I did to be successful with our first round of IVF and specifically what supplements did I take, vitamins, minerals, did I do a certain diet or whatever. And I did make a video about how I prepped for my frozen embryo transfer. And in that video, I show some of the supplements and vitamins that I was taking according to my doctor's recommendations. And I talk a little bit about my diet and stuff, but I didn't do anything really crazy. And I'm still not doing any type of particular diet. I have been very intentional about what I'm eating, making sure I'm getting veggies and protein in at every meal. I haven't been restricting anything other than maybe sugar. I've been trying really hard to avoid sugar and let it be more of a treat. Maybe, you know, once a week I have like a really yummy dessert or whatever. So as far as supplements go, vitamins, minerals, all that sort of stuff, I knew I needed to take a prenatal. So a couple months ago, I was actually approached by a company called U Naturals. Um, it's actually EU Naturals. Anyway, they make some really great supplement blends that are supportive for different things that, you know, women or men might need. And they have, you know, a whole line of female focused blends. So they reached out to me and asked if I would want to try their prenatal as well as some of their fertility blends. And after doing a little bit of digging into their company and their products, I decided to give it a go because I was looking for a prenatal. So I'm taking the conception, which is a female fertility prenatal, and it has like everything you would need in a prenatal, including folate, which is very important. And then I've been taking regulate, which is um, a myo and D Cairo inositol. Sorry if I'm not saying that right, but um, it's just really good for balancing hormones and helping you to ovulate regularly. So I want to thank you naturals for sponsoring this video. I've told you guys before that I would never recommend something to you or accept a sponsorship unless it was something I really could stand behind. And so that's why I even told you naturals that I needed to try the products out for a month or two before I could even really talk about them on my channel. So I will say it's kind of tricky sometimes to figure out if a supplement is doing, actually like doing something for you. It's one of those things you may not notice until after several months. So I'm hoping that these two supplements will, you know, be just what I need as we prep for our frozen embryo transfer. And I'm not gonna lie you guys, I still have a little sliver of hope that we could get pregnant naturally because we have an explained infertility so we have no reason why we can't get pregnant we just aren't getting pregnant on our own and we've had to do IVF but now that my I've been pregnant once before I'm hoping that maybe I could get pregnant naturally because I know that happens but at the same time we're not planning for that we're planning to do a frozen embryo transfer so in addition to these supplements and I'm so sorry if I'm talking a lot but I just get really passionate about this topic obviously um, but in addition to those supplements, I'm also taking vitamin D, vitamin C, and um, CoQ10, and um, some omegas. And those are just 
supplements that I took when I was going through IVF the first time. So I kind of just wanted to boost those back in. And I do want to look into vitamin E as well, because I've read that can be supportive for an IVF transfer as well. So be sure to check the description box below because I will put a link to where you guys can check out these supplements for yourself. And I do have a 10% off coupon code if you want to use that as well. So anyway, it'll all be listed down in the description box below. So I have watched my friends via the internet go through IVF cycles in the past year, the year of 2020, the year of COVID. And I have been so impressed with how people have handled all of the disappointment that can come with that. So I think it's really important that we go into 2021 into planning IVF treatments, fertility treatments, with the understanding that COVID is still a thing and it can still interfere with your protocol and with your treatments. So I've really had to just like wrap my mind around that, that I could get to a couple days before my transfer date and it could all be canceled. So one thing I've had to think about is once we start the official protocol for our frozen embryo transfer, I'm going to be very quarantined because I don't want to risk getting COVID. Even though I got COVID in November, we don't know exactly when we're going to do our frozen embryo transfer, but we're thinking the next like three months or so. And so I don't know how immune I am to getting COVID again. Um, I'm sure I can still get it. Who knows how bad my symptoms will be. I just don't want to risk that at all. And Eric, as far as I know, he hasn't gotten it, or at least he hasn't displayed any symptoms so we really will just be very cautious once we decide to start the official process of our frozen embryo transfer we're going to be very cautious to be self-quarantined so that we don't risk getting COVID and not being able to do the transfer so that is one thing to think about another thing I've had to think about is if I were to get pregnant during a worldwide pandemic what are the risks with that so I've done some research and I will have some links down below of resources on, um, you know, from doctors and what they're saying, some OBGYNs, what they're saying about um, pregnancy and COVID, as well as nursing, breastfeeding and COVID. So those are just some things that I wanted to be aware of. So another thing I am doing as a way to prep myself for IVF this year is to empower myself to be a strong advocate for my own protocol and my own treatment. So the way to do that is to research and to listen and open your mind to all sorts of different treatments available and not get too hung up on one type of treatment or one type of protocol because there are so many different stories out there and experiences and no one has all the, the answers, but we can empower ourselves by researching and doing as much as we can so that we feel confident in um, advocating for our own treatment plan with our doctors. So you can go in and talk to your doctor in a way that's like, here's what I want. What do you think? Rather than just going in to get your treatment and just being like, okay, just tell me what to do because doctors don't know everything. And especially with IVF, one size does not fit all. There are so many different types of protocols and you really have to take it upon yourself to be an advocate because it's very easy to sort of just become a patient number because these fertility clinics are so busy and I don't fault them for that. I think it's amazing that they're doing so much to help people who really want to get pregnant and they just struggle, but that just means you got to do some of the work. You can't just expect your doctor to give you the perfect protocol for you. You need to do some of the research yourself. And I'm saying this to myself because I want to be more confident in how I advocate for my own protocol. So I will have a few resources linked in the description box below. One of those things is this book, It Starts With The Egg. It seriously helped me feel so much more informed and ready to advocate for myself. And just, it gave me a great starting point to dig deeper into what I feel like my um, needs might be for a an IVF protocol. I highly, highly recommend it, you guys. I listened to the audiobook first and then I grabbed the hard copy because I really wanted to be able to write and highlight 
in it and it's been really great so I highly highly recommend that YouTube is also great you guys I did so much research via YouTube when I was going through my first round of IVF because I felt so alone and so I wanted to watch other people go through IVF and see what happened during their cycle so that I could have a better perspective of what to expect so that's an awesome way to do some research as well there are also a lot of really great podcasts that I will have linked down below where you can hear people share their stories of infertility and talk about um, different treatments and even listen to interviews with different reproductive endocrinologists. So I will have those linked down below as well. And then I also have a Facebook group and it's called Infertile and I know it. And you can just look it up on Facebook or you can look in the description box below. You can join our Facebook group and chat with us in that group about um, any questions you might have or you can just kind of be a fly on the wall and hear other people talk about their experiences and ask their questions. It's just so, so helpful. So I really highly recommend a Facebook group and I would love to have you be a part of mine. Another thing that comes from Facebook groups is the support. So feeling like you're not alone, that you have someone to go through this journey with you, even if you've never really met them in real life. But I am a pretty open person and for me, I actually just reached directly out to my close girlfriends who already knew about like my whole IVF story and everything obviously because I share it online but I did reach out to them and just asked for you know some prayers and support um and and told them exactly how they can support me as we you know go through this year of trying to conceive baby number two so I would highly recommend to get some support in whatever way is best for you I know some people don't want to be open with their fertility treatments and what they're going through and that's okay you can always be an anonymous person online and check into forums or Facebook groups. It's just really helpful, especially if you can get support from somebody who's already gone through it or is going through it at the same time as you. So now I want to talk about finances. We all know that IVF is very expensive and we don't get any insurance coverage for it. So it's really quite painful on our pocketbooks, but we all know that IVF is expensive. So the first time we did IVF, we really didn't go into it with a strategic plan as far as our finances went. Um, we just were so desperate <laughs> to have a baby that we had the bulk of it covered. So we were just like, okay, well, whatever comes up, we'll just, you know, put it on a credit card or whatever. And we will just pay that off later because a baby is so important to us. So I don't necessarily recommend that. I think it's good to have a financial plan for how you're going to tackle the expenses of IVF. So Eric and I at the end of 2020 just sat down and really crunched the numbers to figure out how we were going to pay for a transfer which is far less than a full IVF cycle. But we also wanted to add on, okay, well, all of the bills for the pregnancy plus all of the bills for the hospital and the birth and all that stuff. So we really crunched the numbers. That was really helpful to just lay it all out there and really talk about it. And granted, we we do have experience behind us and the first time going into it, we really didn't know all the fees that could come up and we still don't know. There's still other extra things that could come up, but we have a plan for that and we're on the same page. And I think that's so important because the stress of finances and funding something so huge can be really hard on a you know, relationship. So I strongly suggest that you get with your partner and you have that conversation about how you're going to tackle the expenses of IVF. Um, I am planning on doing, and I've been saying this forever, you guys, I promise you guys, Eric and I are going to sit down and we're going to film a video about how we paid for our first IVF cycle. And we're going to share a game plan of how we are tackling this round of expenses. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on that video. All right, you guys, those are the things that we are doing to prep for IVF this year and I hope it was super helpful for you guys. Please comment down below and let me know something that you are doing this year to prep for IVF or maybe you're trying to get pregnant naturally and you're taking some supplements or you've read some things that might support that. So I would love to hear in the comments below and also like this video and be sure to check out You Naturals in the description box below. Thanks again for them sponsoring this video and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye! Thank you.